a young player becomes a rookie instead of being drafted in November, he's almost told, look, you're a rookie, you didn't make the list, we're putting you on, we hope you make it. Is there a restriction on you? I look back now and I say, I don't care when you're picked, how you're picked, if you're on our list, there are no limits. Some of the best years I've had as a coach have not been a premiership year because you just know you've got the most out of the group. And that's, that's all I ask of this group is to find their maximum and then press the button again. We are so restricted in, in mankind. We just do not know the limit. And when, when limits are placed on us or expectations are placed on us, we tend to limit ourselves to that expectation. We you reckon, Ed? Let's get him in the game. Jeffrey? He's got to get in the game. He's just got to hunt that ball. Hunt the ball. Hunt it and go for it. Just makes a bit of confidence. So just, just give him, you know, back himself. You cover up, Jeffrey. Save the coaches. Get the last player up. Get the last player up. I never believed it could happen. Because I just thought, oh, well, even the last player pick, 44th player, be better than the first player. And then I woke up one morning and I thought, hang on, who's the best player at West Coast? Dean Cox. He was a rookie. He was probably picked at number 40, and he's their best player. So it can happen. Sandilands was, was a rookie. Maxwell, captain of the Collingwood, was a rookie. Kirk, rookie, captain of the Premiership side. It can happen. So it's the time you put into this group to see where we're going to finish. Nick's always had the theory on any footballer, not only the Carlton footballers, that you just don't put a, a, a cap on, on, on things, that you, know, you continue to give them the best development individually in a team, and where that takes you is up to them in, in many ways. So the, the no limits is a fantastic um, principle and it certainly applies here with this, this, this group of players that we've got now. The term no limits to me just, just means not, you know, potentially capping what our upside may be or, or not using up a whole lot of energy analysing what that, what that potential upside is. You want a jumping flea? You want to be able to hold a jumping flea that can jump six foot? Put him in a cup, put a lid on it, he'll bounce up 100 times, 200 times, take the lid off, it won't bounce any further than, than the cup size because he's so, he's, he thinks there's a limit there on his head getting it belted, so therefore that's it. He's now programmed. Too many humans get programmed by teachers, coaches, media, expectations. So there's no limit. Fortunately, I've never put restrictions on myself. Albeit the fact that through school you're constantly told um, you're no good or you're no good at this, you're okay at that and you almost then gravitate to the things you're good at because you're fearful of the things you're not good at. <clears throat> As you get older you think, well hang on, I'm getting told I'm now too old a to coach. But how old is too old a to coach? Been told a few years ago you're too old. Um, why? Have I lost all the thoughts about the game? I mightn't be as I mightn't be as quick or do as much on the training track as I used to say 20 years ago. But that's irrelevant. So technically, I think we have this obsession with youth, young coaches, because what they know the game better than what I know it. I'll stick up for the older coach all the time. But I'll, I'll encourage the young coach to get him appointed. There's no question about that. But don't disregard experience. You know, otherwise Ferguson wouldn't be coached at 71. 71. He'd win a title again this year. So, and, and in his own mind, you, you are, the old cliche that I always keep hearing is, look in the mirror and you'll find out how old you are. Don't look in the mirror and act the way you feel. I've had 40 odd years experience in this game and each year has served me well. So from 2011 to, to today, I believe I'm a year more experienced and better than what it was in 2011. I just see it as an extension of, of life to be able to stay in the game of football. First meeting I had with, with Carlton was last Monday. Um, there were going to be those uh, 
naysayers who say that it happened previous to that. Can you understand the doubts though? I mean, was the timing... The timing I, I, let me say, say this, Tony, I have no no doubt you would have doubt. I mean, I would never, I'd be totally surprised that you would not have doubt. When you change a coach, that's the biggest thing you do at a footy club, and it was a big, big thing for the club to come to that decision. And to get a bloke of the calibre of Mick Mouldhouse, I think we're fairly lucky to have him in the marketplace. And the two things I was never worried about with Mick was, was did he have the fire in the belly? And I think his first press conference showed that he's still got that. And could he get something extra out of our players? Age is irrelevant, and, and certainly Mick's been able to prove that uh, year in and year out, ever since he's coached, that he's stayed up with the times, he's been proactive, uh, never reactive. Uh, the way he was able to, to mould West Coast into a premiership team and then the way he was able to do the same at Collingwood and in completely different different manners. So, um, yeah, look, uh, he's got many years left in him as, as, as a coach because he's got a, a youthful mind. Oh, Marcus, right in front of you. That lateral one you've got to use, David. David, just watch your kicks. You're going to kick under pressure, but you're going to watch your kicks. Yeah. Scratch you with the hands, boys. Make sure they're right before you go home tonight. We, have, we will not have a second chance tomorrow. They're in your hands, they're staying there. Nick, you've been doing plenty of ground ball. I'd be, I'd be worried about that more than the marking. You're going to be subjected to that more so than an aerial ball. Coming to the, the organisation, I feel is the, the first thing was lack of confidence, uh, probably lack of surety, maybe a group of men that, that needed structure and needed leadership. From what I understand, he, the players are left in no uncertain terms as to what's required when they're all out on the field and their behaviour off the ground. And uh, we just had an incident with a player this week and I think that may never happen again. Carlton right now have got some ageing superstars, some mid-aged players who are very, very good, and a couple of young blokes that are on the up. Every player on the list will be given a clean slate to move forward. It's, it's an adage from day one in football. Players pick themselves. The game style will change dramatically. There's no question about that. I've seen the way Carlton have played. They play, they've played a different way than the way I would have, I coached my side. Not, and let me say, there's no right way or wrong way of coaching a football side if they win. So all I'm saying is the, the way that Carlton played is substantially different to the way I want the side to play. So that's a heck of a lot of training, a heck of a lot of faith to say we're going to drop that and do this. But, if, but I always believe in smart people, please the fool, don't tease the fool. We've got a big job in front of us and sometimes that's overpowering and I just think we've got to get rid of those shackles and know that destiny lies in our own hands and that's, that's probably the biggest, biggest hurdle. There's a real humbleness here. Now, when I was outside this football club, looking at Carlton, there didn't appear to be a great deal of hubble in this. Hey! <laughs> you get forward, hurt him, but just remember he'll try to get the back one. As a hawk, when he gets that evil stand, you, you know you did something wrong, he gives you that look and you know you sit back into your, into your shell a little bit. I've coached enough against my old teams to know that you, it's not about you. I'm just dreading it. I'll just be glad for it to be over, to tell the truth. I am not silly enough to suspect that when we walk onto the ground of the MCG in round two that there's not going to be a little bit of banter between the supporters and them to me.